I'm Bill Brennan, yes. Why did you why did you file a citizen's complaint against Chris Christie? Because the governor was derelict in his duty when he was told on 9-11 of, of 2013 that the local access lanes to the George Washington Bridge had been closed. He didn't open them. He had an obligation. It was a duty that was clearly inherent in the nature of his office to reopen those closed access lanes, and he failed in that duty. Now, I didn't make the law. That's a state law crime. The, Mr. Fishman may not have jurisdiction over that, but Mr. Perino had jurisdiction over that, Mr. Molinelli had jurisdiction over that, and Mr. Graywall has jurisdiction over that. So none of them took any action. None of them interviewed a single witness. None of them even looked at this issue for a moment. And it's very simple. All you have to prove is that he knew about it. We know he took no action because the, the person who reopened that lane was Patrick Foy, not Governor Christie. And the people who closed that lane derived all of their authority directly from the governor. He says that, that there were only three people that said that he knew about it. He's wrong. It was Mike Duhame. It was Deborah Gramignocci. It was... It was Bridget Kelly, Mike Druniak, and, and a number of other people, and he made one of them a judge. So if she is a liar and she lied under oath and committed perjury when she said that the governor knew that those lanes were closed, why did he make her a judge? Either she's a dishonest judge or he's a dishonest governor. Those are the only two choices. Wasn't this um, case postponed until January? No, that's misinformation. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, Judge, Judge Mizdall of the assi assignment judge of Bergen County will decide on whether or not my motion for special prosecutor will be granted. Now, in the aftermath of my motion, Mr. Perino and Mr. Graywall recuse themselves. They've admitted that they have a conflict and they can't be impartial when it comes to prosecuting state of New Jersey versus defendant Christopher J. Christie. But they've said the people who they control don't have that conflict. And there's no such thing as a firewall from a, a floor above. You can't firewall off somebody who you, who, who you control. The, they could end up hearing parking ticket appeals the rest of their career if they don't get fired, if they find that Judge, Judge McGeady was right when he found probable cause. Remember, probable cause is what a grand jury finds when they indict somebody. This man was indicted by a judge, and he's calling that judge's decision dishonorable. He's calling J Senator L L Lesniak a lunatic. He's just flailing about like a madman, calling everybody names, and he won't get to the facts. Does he have to be in court tomorrow? He no. does not have to be in court tomorrow, but we're in court tomorrow with our tax dollars. We're paying his criminal defense attorney to fight against a special prosecutor. We're paying the county prosecutor to fight against a special prosecutor. And we're paying the Office of Attorney General to fight against a special prosecutor. And if you look at the way they're all lined up ones on one side, and then you ask yourself, how is this not a conflict, you get the answer. It is a conflict. And no reasonable person could believe that the subordinate to any of these people can be impartial and can aggressively pursue a charge against the most powerful governor in the country. The governor of New Jersey appoints all of these people. This isn't just me saying this. This is counsel that were in the White House. This was the, pa the, the, the Dennis Hasterneck counsel. There are the, a number of people who have come forward and said, this is a clear and unambigu unambiguous conflict. And the fact that it has to be me is somewhat pathetic because we pay taxes to these people and we should be, instead of paying $30 million to renovate this building, maybe $30,000 to hire a special prosecutor to go after the crime that we all know he committed. Six people have testified that he's lying under oath. Three of them he's good friends with and one of them he made a judge. How much more of this are we gonna pile on before this charade just falls apart completely? And this is a charade. Anybody who tells you that Chris Christie was unaware that the local access lanes in Fort Lee were closed is either hopelessly conflicted or incredibly stupid. Because I don't know a single person who believes Chris Christie when he stands in front of a podium and says, I had no idea about it. I was blindsided by it. And he says the things to the national media that he won't say in front of you because you know the answer. He says that he fired those people immediately. He didn't fire Baroni and, and Wildstein. He wished them well. He let them resign. He was holding on to that story that it was still a traffic study up until he got caught. He was a little sauce that the lanes were closed. So the story just keeps shifting and shifting and conflicting and conflicting. This man is standing on sand. He has no foundation. He doesn't believe in the things he's saying. And he gets people to repeat his lies. And it's got to stop. The truth is the truth. And, and more people need to come out and speak truth to power in this country because we're losing touch. We're losing touch. First order of government is to provide health and safety to its citizens. Yes. Yet another juncture.
another juncture where technology is intervening in the interaction of our citizens and emergency services personnel. But what do you do if you're so sick that you can't speak? What do you do if you've been abducted or are otherwise in danger and your life depends on not being detected as you make that 911 call? Call when you can, text when you can. Anybody who's a local news reporter and he won't address issues that involve conflicts of interest which are established clearly and unambiguously in the office of governor. The, the Attorney General of the State of New Jersey recused himself in the matter of State of New Jersey versus Chris Christie, and the governor of New Jersey came here to talk about peeling paint and, and building conditions. Well, the structure of the government is such that the governor has placed himself outside the rule of law. Right now, the Attorney General has admitted to having a conflict of interest. That conflict of interest cannot be cured by the Attorney General appointing his subordinate. And that's what they're going to argue tomorrow in front of Judge Mizdal. So if you're concerned about the appearance of impropriety, you should do more than paint the building. You should agree that a special prosecutor must be appointed now to make sure that the integrity of our judicial system and the executive branch isn't further called into question. Because no reasonable person can believe that Christopher Perino, who has a, has a conflict of interest, can appoint somebody on his team and not affect the outcome of his appointee. And that's exactly what they're arguing with your tax dollars. Christopher Perino has authorized the payment of fees to a, de a defense counsel that is defending Governor Christie in the state of New Jersey versus Chris Christie. So if the structure of the government is suspect because the Attorney General is paying the defendant and paying Gibson and Dove, Dove and, and Randy Mastrow $12 million here and $10,000 there, then somewhere along the line, the structure of the government is at odds. There's, there's too many people on the defense side and nobody on the prosecution side when it comes to Governor, Governor New Jersey's crimes.